Now I present to you two characterization techniques often used in the catalysis studies. Now we talk about the temperature program reduction or oxidation that are material characterization processes commonly used in catalysis to study the surface chemistry of metals or metal oxide under varying thermal conditions. The voted instrument can acquire qualitative quantitative data relating to the reducing or oxidant gas mixture that are made to flow over the metallic samples. This process is integral to catalyst investigation as it provides accurate insights into catalyst reducibility or oxidability and the reaction rates in the presence of metal surfaces. The second technique that I show you is the chemisorption. Chemisorption is used to quantitatively measure the number of surface active sites which are used to promote a specific catalytic reaction. The objective of the chemisorption is to determine the number of accessible metal sites in a noble metal catalyst. We exploit the high reactivity of noble metal surface atom with small molecules like hydrogen, oxygen, CO and similar. We count the number of molecules that have reacted and knowing the stoichiometry of the reaction, we can obtain the number of metal surface atoms. The probe molecule must be selective for reaction with metal and not with the support. Must be selective for reaction with surface atom and not with the bulk. And this reaction must be irreversible. The chemisorption can be performed both with static or dynamic method. And we talk about the last one. The dynamic method is also called pulse method because we send the pulses of probe molecule with the carrier gas to the catalyst and we detect the consumption of probe molecule with the TCD detector. An example of protocol of chemisorption of hydrogen on platinum is reported in this graph. We have at the beginning, an eating ramp in order to heat the sample up to a defined temperature. Then an hydrogen flow is admitted to the reactor in order to reduce all the metallic sides. At the same temperature, a purge with helium is performed in order to eliminate the excess of hydrogen. Then we cool the sample and we fix the temperature depending on the probe molecule and on the metallic surface and we send a number of pulses. A small amount of catalytic powder, like 100 mg, is loaded into the quartz tube reactor. A small amount of quartz wall is used to sustain the catalytic bed and to cover the upper part of the catalyst. A quartz tube is inserted into the reactor to reduce the void volume. Then the reactor is closed by the reactor head, where the quick connection to gas port are present. The reactor is put into the instrument oven In the external part of the oven, grains of desiccant are present on the gas line in order to completely eliminate the humidity in the gas flow. How is the TPR performed? In a typical TPR experiment, a reducing gaseous mixture such as diluted hydrogen is made to flow across the catalyst under gradually increasing thermal conditions. This linear heating 
allows the reduction rate to be correlated with the temperature. A highly sensitive detector continually analyzes the chemical difference in atmospheric concentration at the outlet of the reactor, producing an accurate picture of the maximum or peak reduction rate of the catalyst. The correlation between the area of the obtained reduction peak and the amount of the consumed hydrogen is given by appropriate calibration performed using a poor copper oxide sample. In the case of a TPO experiment, the principle is the same. The gaseous mixture is composed in this case by diluted oxygen and the calibration is performed using poor metallic copper. How we perform the chemisorption? The chemisorption for metal dispersion measure is carried out at constant temperature. And this temperature changes with the probe molecule used and the metal due to the occurrence of spillover phenomena. After an appropriate pretreatment, performed in order to eliminate all the physisorbent substances and to completely reduce the metal phase, a series of hydrogen pulses are injected with a predetermined interval time during until the amount of exit hydrogen pulses reached a constant value. This value corresponds to the surface saturation. The hydrogen consumption is now calculated as difference between the area of peaks corresponding to the saturation and each peaks detected before the saturation. Since the stoichiometry of hydrogen chemisorption is known, it is possible now to calculate the amount of metal reacting with the probe molecule. The ratio between the reacted metal and the nominal metal loading gives the metal dispersion. 